So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's CAS webinar, Evaluating High Quality Instructional Materials. My name is Rosie O'Brien Boytek, and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for the Connecticut Association of Schools. We know that administrators and teachers spend hours of their time aligning state and national standards to district and grade level goals and student learning expectations, writing the curriculum for subject area and grade level courses, and then finding the resources and materials to support instruction can be a daunting task. That's why we're excited today to introduce you to Ed Curation, an online education repository of evidence-based resources with the purpose of assisting educators through the curriculum procurement process. Ed Curation curates a collection of high quality supplemental learning programs into an online marketplace to make searching, discovering, evaluating, comparing, and connecting to programs and providers easier than ever before. I'm really excited about the free did you hear that? Free access to the Ed Curation Marketplace where administrators and teachers can find high quality and evidence-based instructional materials, including many turnkey resources to assist with staff shortages. In just a moment, I will introduce our presenters to you so that you can learn more about the Ed Curation Marketplace. But first, I wanna let you know that today's CAS webinar is being brought to you in part by our corporate partners, Horace Mann, College Funding Coach, MCN Fundraising, Jostens, and Pullman and Cumley. We thank them for their continuing support of CAS professional development for all principals and educators in Connecticut. We're very excited to bring you this webinar and glad that you're joining us today. As a reminder, the session will be recorded and posted on the CAS website so you can view it later and share it with your colleagues as well as your faculty and staff. Please use the chat feature as a way to stay actively engaged in the learning during the session and to let us know if you have any technical issues as we will be monitoring the chat. In addition, we will be monitoring the Q&A feature and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can during this session. So please be sure to ask your questions in the Q&A. It's now my pleasure to introduce Ed Curation's Director of Programs, Christy Hemingway. Christy served for a number of years as an elementary and secondary teacher before transitioning to the role of instructional coach and professional developer. She's worked with teachers to improve literacy practices and assisted districts across the country in implementing new curriculum and instructional strategies. Christy leads Ed Curation's podcast, where we reshape learning and spearheads explorations and Ed Curation's Ed Trustees. Welcome, Christy. Thanks, Rosie. It's great to be here. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Christy Hemingway, the Director of Programs from Ed Curation, and we from Ed Curation are actually tuning in from Colorado, so it's very bright and early for us here, but we are so grateful for this chance to meet and um, want to thank Rosie from uh, the Connecticut Association of Schools and also Renee Islas, Edu Ed Curation's Chief Education Officer, who are kind of responsible for bringing us all together this morning. And I am the one who will be answering most of your questions during the event and following up with you afterward if you have follow-up questions. So I wanted to just make a quick appearance this morning so that there we could have a little bit of face-to-face. Uh, -face. But my primary purpose here today is actually to introduce our presenter, my colleague and friend, Timory Tolme. Timory is a former teacher. She's a, she was a literacy coach administrator and a university faculty developer. And she became an edupreneur in 2008 when she co-founded a curriculum and professional development company called Inquiry by Design, which she launched, grew and exited from in 2014. And after many years of my own teaching career, I encountered the work of Inquiry by Design and joined her in that company. And um, so, in 2019, when she entered the ed, edupreneur world again and launched Ed Curation, I joined her once again to bring this matchmaking marketplace to the education industry to help educators more easily find and evaluate the torrent of resources that are flooding into the education market. A lot of them amazing, some of them less. So our goal, like yours, is to get the best learning materials into the classroom as quickly and seamlessly as possible. And so to help us get smarter about how to do that, welcome Timory Tolney. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, everyone, for having me here. It, uh, I was excited to hear that Horseman is sponsoring this podcast or this uh, webinar today because 
ever since I was a teacher in the 90s, they have been my insurance company. So that's a nice little, um, I don't know, feels good to hear that, that they're still doing the good work of helping teachers everywhere stay insured. Uh, I'm happy to be here today, excited to get to know the state of Connecticut better and to share with you what we've been learning as we've been working to um, curate the highest quality instructional materials for educators nationwide into the ed curation marketplace. So I'm hopeful that you can all see my screen. Maybe Christy can tell me if you can't. Um, but before we before we get started, I want I'm I'm curious about what resources will the folks here on this webinar be? What types of resources will you be looking? Uh, at and considering for purchase over the next 12 to 24 months, say? Are you in the market for SEL resources? Are you spending your federal dollars on learning recovery tools? Um, are you investing in reading intervention or STEM? Many folks are looking for online tutoring, or is it something else that we haven't listed here? And if you're specifically looking for another type of resource, if you wouldn't mind entering what you're looking for in the chat, that helps us to know um, the types of resources that we need to be hunting for and bringing into our marketplace for you. So let us know what you're looking for this year and what we'll be, what I'll be talking about today is uh, all the ways that Ed Curation recommends that school administrators, the steps that we recommend you go through as you're considering which instructional resources uh, to, to bring into your system. And we, of course, always recommend that you try before you buy, that you set up a very thoughtful and intentional pilot um, and run that as objectively as possible before you make a purchase. And even if it's a small purchase, um, we know that there are ways to do that that I'll be sharing with you today. And let's see, so lots of learning recovery and intervention, a little bit of STEM. We have seen tons of purchases of SEL materials over the last year, but maybe folks have already made those purchases in Connecticut. Um, so thank you for entering in the poll, which you will be looking for. Again, if, if you're looking for something that's not in this please enter it in the chat. So today together, we have the following learning objectives. The first thing that you're going to learn are five recommended strategies uh, to evaluate that we recommend you go through to evaluate instructional materials to determine if they're even worthy of purchase. So those are in brief. Oops. Checking for mission alignment. This is something that sometimes we miss. Sometimes we think our school's mission is aligned with the company's mission because we get along with the sales rep so well. And you know, the largest companies are able to attract the most successful and amazing salespeople that have really good relational skills. And so, um, I've heard you know some kind of nightmare stories about uh, certain leaders in schools and districts that have really vibed with the, the sales rep only to find out that the products really weren't maybe culturally relevant enough for their students or um, not meeting their needs in some other way. So really be intentional about checking for the, the alignment of your mission to theirs. Of course, we always ask providers, are you aligned to the standards? And they always say that they are, um, but really do the hard work of of looking at their standards alignment documents that they should be required to make. Um, here at Ed Creation, we're always helping the vendors that we work with to intentionally illustrate the ways in which they align to standards. Um, so make sure that, that you're looking into that very, very carefully. Evaluate the program's evidence base, which we're always doing. Um, and here at Ed Creation, we're making it easier for you to do this because uh, it can be difficult to really ascertain, is the evidence strong that this program will work with my students or is it is it is there evidence, but it's kind of weak. And so we'll show you how we help make that easier for you. Um, definitely request run and, and, and evaluate your pilot. Lots of programs want to give you a free trial for like two weeks and you can understand they, they need to keep their lights on and pay their bills. 
but a lot of districts require a full three month pilot be completed before they'll be willing to fund things. So um, work hard to negotiate. And that's, that's, the last, um, that's the last trick up our sleeves is to negotiate your pricing. Um, some of us grow up with better negotiating skills than others or are taught this um, from a young age, but sometimes as educators, we're so caring that we're not um, that we're not as tough negotiators as we can be. So I'm excited to share with you my favorite tool that helped me be a better negotiator after being a teacher and a, an administrator for too many years. Um, so, in order to do this, we will look at what has been happening with the purchasing of instructional ma materials from a historical context. Uh, we'll look carefully at some examples of company missions and their evidence base, and then I'll invite you to actually complete a challenge around the webinar to actually go through the mission standards, evidence base, pilot opportunities of a, of a program that either that you really like that you're already in use at your school or one that you've been considering using so that you can walk away from this webinar um, having a better sense of a, if a certain product will meet your requirements for purchase or for pilot before purchase. Uh, and at the very end, we'll assess what we learned today. So looking back, in the past, directors of curriculum instruction under the supervision of the chief academic officer of a district would purchase instructional materials for every teacher to use throughout the school district. When I was teaching in Denver public schools and when I was teaching in the Santa Ana Unified School District in California, the district would provide the instructional materials. Um, this was the cut more of the textbook area. We really only had four subjects. Um, this sometimes resulted in wasted dollars. I remember inheriting classrooms with tons of books on shelves that were very dusty and hadn't been used in many years. And the other problem with this era of time and why we've evolved is because as we know, core curriculum doesn't meet the, the very nuanced and specific needs of all the learners that we served. And so we've really advanced over the last 20 years as, a, as the field of education to better meet specific uh, student specific learning needs. And so with that, um, we've grown to have new subjects, uh, intervention, special education, social emotional learning, Nowadays, math and science isn't enough. We have STEM, coding, robotics, data science. And so as all these new subjects are being introduced and taught in schools, more and more resources, of course, um, are, are being created and provided for to make our teaching easier. So I found this this graph from Titan Partners, and I think it does a really good job of kind of encapsulating how things have grown uh, over the last 15 years or so. And so what this graph is showing us is that in 2005, um, the majority of dollars were spent on core print textbooks, um, and things have changed so very much since then. By 2010, we see that uh, supplemental and digital resources are starting to take up more of the annual K-12 spend on instructional materials. And by 2015, supplemental digital learning programs have taken over almost 75% of preferred purchases nationwide. These supplemental digital resources are more specific. They address really particular learners' needs. For example, one of our favorites at Ed Curation is called Florio. And it's virtual reality learning for autistic students. So what students do is they wear a VR headset um, and their teacher or tutor or para professional programs virtual social interactions for the autistic students to practice um, social interactions with. And it's, it's very uh, effective. It's used in, in medical settings and in school settings. And so it's a good example of how we go from maybe general education to some very specific supplemental digital learning programs for very niche, unique groups of students. That's um, far better than anything we've had in the past. 
We also have a great program that we love um, from a company called Student, where they, they develop online business courses for high school students. So they have digital marketing, the students can learn online and social media marketing and very, very uh, more unique. And we're even starting to see our ed curation districts break up their curriculum adoption funds to purchase maybe three supplemental programs instead of one core curriculum program across the country. And so um, we can imagine how in 2020, um, we're learning that only, it was only digital resources that were purchased and largely supplemental. We saw Pearson sell off their entire K-12 um, uh, set of curriculum. So print is going away and core is losing market share as well. And as a result of all this, there are more and more materials flooding the market and more educators in charge of determining what gets select, what, what we choose. So maybe the school counselor is um, advocating for a particular SEL curriculum and the principal is looking for something for MTSS and PBIS and the PE coach is advocating for something like unruly splats to bring in to teach coding during PE. And so with how do we ensure that any of the resources under consideration are even worth considering? And furthermore, as a result of the government's reaction to COVID, our budgets to purchase these resources has grown as well. A few years ago, we were spending about $20 billion a year on instructional materials, but last year that number grew to $60 billion with the help from Esser and Gear. And so while instructional resource purchasing used to be a district level decision, now many districts embrace site-based decision-making and flow curriculum dollars to individual schools, um, and there's more and more money. So we have more subjects that we need to teach, more tools and resources being developed to teach these subjects and more money to purchase them and more people making decisions about what resources to purchase. And so how do you determine which solutions should even be in the running? Um, I was interested in solving this problem because I worked as a teacher, as an instructional coach and as a district administrator uh, in three different settings, which I loved so very much and went through three different instructional resource adoptions over the 12 years that I did that. Um, and then after starting a curriculum company myself, I thought we should have one place online where we go to kind of perform our due diligence, search and find, see what's available um, and, and get smarter before we have to make a purchasing decision. So I built Ed Curation and it's free for educators always, as Rosie mentioned, and so I'd love to share it with you today. So it's edcuration.com, and you can come here, and you can search by core or supplemental resources, ed tech tools that can be used across grade levels in different subject area classrooms, and also some remote teaching solutions that are becoming really helpful uh, across the country. You can search by subject area. This is the way most people use the site. Uh, or grade level. You can also look at by trending topics. We have a number of financial literacy resources on here. Uh, folks are needing some turnkey solutions that they can just turn on and that they know that will address students learning needs if they have a substitute in the classroom for a long time. We also have some professional learning resources on the site as well. So uh, I like to start at English language arts because that's what I taught for 12 years. Um, and again, you can filter down by grade level. If you are only purchasing digital solutions or maybe blended, you can look for that. You can also filter by evidence base and see which of these programs have been reviewed by Ed Reports or the What Works Clearinghouse and what, which ones have special adaptations for particular populations of students. And so you can, this is your list of search results, uh, narrowed down here, 34 items. I can begin to look at the different product pages. So this is Reading Plus. You can see right here in this space, the different accolades that the product has earned. Um, in this case, they've been reviewed by What Works Clearinghouse and earned two digital promise badges. Um, if you have used Reading Plus in your school or district, I would love for you to review this product. It takes you down here and you can let us know on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to recommend this product to another educator like yourself and certify that you've actually used this program in the last two years. Um, 
we're really trying to crowdsource authentic users' opinions about these to go alongside the accolades that the kind of, you know, experts in the industry are using, but we know how important actual teacher and administrators' opinions are about these products as well. You can view videos on our site. You can connect to vendor to learn about pricing. Some companies will publish their pricing right here. You can learn about the, the audiences that are intended for. You can download those standards alignments documents that I was talking about earlier to make sure that they're aligned to standards and see if they're, if they're missing any standards that you need to address with another program. And download white papers to read about uh, reading uh, efficacy studies, blog posts, podcasts, and go directly to the company's website. Ad administrators are telling us that the learn more section really allows them to do the proper due diligence that used to take a long time going back and forth with the sales rep um, to learn if this is a, a program even worth considering. And Another thing you can do is if, if you like Reading Plus or any of these programs, when you first look, you can heart them. You can go and view all your favorites and you can click to compare them against each other in the form of this little spreadsheet. And so you can see which one, what type of resource are they? Which ones have the most evidence of effectiveness that they've collected, um, the research that they've done around their product's efficacy, which ones are aligned to standards, um, which ones have efficacy studies, which ones will allow you to do a pilot, and then which ones are sharing their pricing right on the screen. So this can be a nice time saver as well. And when you find a program that you like, I really love the story world for English language learners. I was an English language teacher for many, many years. Um, you can request info from them and a little pop-up button will come up and you can tell them if you want them to email you or phone or text message you. Uh, you can also just ask them a question really quickly uh, and then they'll be in touch with you. And so ed curation, um, does you know we don't charge you to use this um, we deliver leads to the vendors the vendors pay to participate in the marketplace um, so every time you click here i don't get paid uh, but story world continues to subscribe year after year if if you find this useful and you click on this uh, so we would love it if you would do this if you find this helpful and so next up for you is to identify a possibility and then once you've decided that maybe reading plus or story world might be might be interesting for you then we'd like to encourage that you perform a, what we call a desk review uh, and so for the desk review we recommend those similar steps check for mission alignment standards and analyze their evidence base it's not enough to just have a link to what works clearinghouse or some digital promise badges but what is that um what works clearinghouse's evidence snapshot saying specifically about this product so i'll give you some examples so the denver school of science and technology came to ed curation and said we really want a a financial literacy curriculum that um speaks to our students and you know, is not just um, talking about white upper middle class management of finances through the stock market, for example. And so we were able to introduce them to Pockets Change, uh, whose mission is to build financial resilience through hip hop pedagogy as a tool for self-care and social justice. DSST really felt like the Pockets Change mission best aligned with their own and the students that they served. So um, that's a good example of how Checking for mission can really help you. Oops. And for the standards alignment, we all know that if you're looking for core curriculum in English, math, or middle school science, then Ed Reports is the best place to go to see if they have earned a green uh, review from Ed Reports and if they meet all of the standards in, in a given, in one of those given subject areas. But who is judging? say SEL products alignments to the CASEL standards or financial literacy products alignment to the national standards for personal financial education or coding products alignment to CSTA standards or ISTE. And so ask the company, 
which standards they've aligned their product to when you're purchasing products outside of the core content areas um, and ask them to provide documentation of the alignment. And for the companies that we carried onto the marketplace, we work with them to do that alignment work so that you can clearly see um, which standards are they meeting and which ones are they not meeting. So you can make the most informed decisions possible. As far as their, their evidence of effectiveness, effectiveness, you'll want to go to the What Works Clearinghouse and make sure that you are looking at their evidence rating, which they rate in pluses and minuses and zeros. Um, they might have you know, a zero evidence rating versus other programs have a plus plus evidence rating. And they also display an improvement index that can be interpreted as the expected change of percentile rank for an average comparison group. If, if that student had received the intervention, so you can compare your student population to the student populations in the study to see if um, you are likely to, to earn the same kind of evidence uh, and improvement by using that tool. And you can also evaluate their evidence snapshot um, to get even more details about uh, under what setting this program worked. Next, we encourage you to go to Digital Promise, check and see if the programs you're considering have earned Digital Promise badges. You might be familiar with Digital Promise's Learning Variability Product Certification and Research-Based Design Product Certification, but they have a new one that's coming out really soon. I think actually, Yesterday or today, um, it was a deadline for companies to submit their, their products to be evaluated for prioritizing racial equity in AI design, which is a really new, exciting way that Digital Promise is evaluating the instructional materials. Um, is the a AI design with racial equity in mind? Super important stuff. We'll be learning about those badges soon. And finally, um, have they earned an ISTE seal of alignment? ISTE is recognizing EdTech products for their alignment to the ISTE standards. These resources provide high quality standards aligned learning that enhances students' digital age skills. And so if any of those companies and organizations have reviewed products on Ed Curation, you'll find that there. We also have the Ed Curation score, as I mentioned, where we're working to crowdsource your opinions about the different resources, um, because I know that you want to hear from other educators, what they think of the programs and to share your experience with them when you love or don't love. Right now, the most that you can do is, is rate or review and read what other people have rated or reviewed. Um, but in the future, we're working to make right here, Sherry's name uh, clickable and to build a messaging app so that you can reach out to Sherry if you're considering the program that she was rating and ask her really how bad is the organization? How bad is the ease of use? Is the con does the content of the curriculum outweigh um, the parts of it that she didn't like and to have a conversation with her? So that's an exciting new development that we've been working on. And also, you know, sometimes Programs are newer to market and they haven't been evaluated yet by uh, one of these experts in the field. Uh, but here at Ed Curation, we work with the companies to determine what evidence should they be collecting from their initial users to determine their own evidence of effectiveness. And so um, we work with those providers to upload that data in the form of what we call um, their own evidence-based study or their own product impact report. And we list them on the homepage in this little section uh, called our collection of evidence-based learning resources. And so maybe the program hasn't been reviewed by Ed Reports yet, but they have started collecting their own evidence base and um, you can review that as well. So we work to quickly show you uh, each product's alignment to standards and the evidence of effectiveness from these different places. And so now I want to invite you halfway through this webinar to complete a challenge. So uh, for the next five minutes, I'm gonna ask you to think about a program that you believe is effective. This is either one that you use in your school or district or one that you're considering that's kind of on the table under, for, for, under discussion. 
And then I want you to search for that product's effectiveness using either Ed Curation or the product's own website. And I want you to go through kind of all those different area places um, to search for their evidence of effectiveness. So has the product been reviewed by Ed Reports? What does Ed Reports have to say about them? Uh, what does the What Works Clearinghouse have to say? Have they earned any digital promise badges or an ISTE seal of alignment? Has anyone reviewed them from Ed Curation? What does the company say about their own evidence of effectiveness? And then once you learn a little bit, I want you to chat the evidence that you discover. So such as Reading Plus has shown to be effective on the What Works Clearinghouse and has earned two digital promise badges. They claim to improve reading proficiency up to two and a half grade levels in a single school year. Um, so five minutes from now till 10.05, will you start by considering a program that you believe is effective? Think for yourself for a minute. What is the one that you're going to investigate on your own computer in the next five minutes? Think about what you're using or what you're thinking about using or adopting. You also can just play around on ed curation and see what jumps out at you based on the areas that you said, reading intervention, um, that you were considering buying for this year. Next, search for the product's effectiveness. Let's take a few minutes now. Let's take about the next three, four minutes and take some time. Okay. Please let us know in the chat the evidence that you found about the program you're investigating. Five minutes might have been too short of a time to find any evidence, but if that's the case, then let us know at least what you were investigating, what program you were investigating and why. I'll take a second to take a look at the chat and, and see what we are learning. Membean, yes. I've struggled to get Membean to update their page too. I would love it if you would click ask a question um, from them and, and ask them to send some evidence to support. We actually have an ed trustee that works with Membean. Uh, Jennifer Sarge is asking about them and he really loves it. He His name is John DeMasso, and he works at a Brophy College Preparatory in Arizona, and he really loves Membean. Um, and so we would love for Membean to add more of their evidence of effectiveness to their page at Ed Curation, so reach out to them. Um, I could also be happy to put you in touch with John DeMasso, I'm sure would tell you why he likes them so much. Illustrative math is rated highly on ed reports. Second step, second step is a very popular comprehensive SEL curriculum. Thank you for looking into these different resources. Um, again, we have those buttons where you can connect to vendors with, in the case that you need more information. Um, and we are always working with them to, to come up with a more comprehensive plan for evaluating their evidence of effectiveness. And that brings me kind of to the next topic, which is what if the company is too young? You know, I mean, new products enter the market every day and, and it takes a while to really run a proper pilot, at least three months um, and to be used by a, a particular group um, and to serve specific student needs and then to collect relevant data afterwards and to analyze that data and determine. Um, and so, you know, before they're able to do that through the What Works Clearinghouse, for example, or through Ed Reports, uh, we work with them to do it themselves. Uh, and so right now we're working with a company called Written Out Loud that we're super excited about. Uh, they just launched during the pandemic and they're run by a man named, uh, is he in Connecticut? You all might've heard of him. His name's Joshua Shelov, and he was featured on Good Mer Morning America because he took his, the, the name of the company is Written Out Loud, like written out loud, because what he did was he, took his experience of writing screenplays for Hollywood 
in which he was most successful when he talked through his screenplay ideas with others before he actually wrote them. And he developed that into a curriculum and actually a, a whole writing program that he launched during the pandemic where students work in teams to talk through their writing ideas. And he specifically focused on kind of upper elementary and, and middle school where the students are talking through ideas for stories and they're working in teams to write the stories that they envision together in much in the same ways that in Hollywood and on TV shows, there's whole writing groups that write together. He's bringing kind of these best practices from industry into the classroom and they can actually be outsourced to come in and run these kinds of um, writing, team writing sessions. Students produce books. Well, anyway, you can imagine they just launched during the pandemic. They haven't been, their program hasn't been reviewed by any of the experts that we value so much. But he did uh, do some really thoughtful pre and post test writing work with um, East Windsor Elementary School um, that adopted them first for their summer program. And the results were so dramatic that now East Windsor has adopted them for the writing instruction for the entire school, um, grades three through five, I believe. And, and so he was able to in, intentionally collect pre and post writing data for the students that participate in his summer program before and after the summer program. And then for all the students in the school that didn't participate and the results were so dramatic uh, that it, it was so compelling. So I say this all to you because even if a program has not been reviewed by one of the industry standards, they could still be collecting their own evidence of effectiveness and provide some really compelling reasons to consider working with them. At least start with a pilot and, and see what happens. Um, yeah, Renee put written out loud in there. It, it's, it's really, we're super excited about what they're doing. I would have loved that as a, a middle school English teacher. I'm also hoping that he will develop some um, professional learning to kind of help bring his methodology to, so that teachers can run it themselves as well. Oops, wrong way. Um, and so is there value in partnering, partnering with newer to market programs? So of course, I think that there can be, uh, you know, Schools are responding to the, the need in our world to teach data science, but there aren't so many resources available yet for this. And so newer solutions are being developed. Um, and so by considering programs that are newer to market, you can procure newer, more innovative solutions. And you can influence the growth and development of the program, truly partnering with the products to influence their development. I know John Damaso did this with Membean. Um, Membean is a vocabulary study solution that's very personalized for students and has them working on their own individual kind of SAT, this is high school vocabulary study, lists of words and doesn't um, waste students' time on words that they individually already know. And uh, John really enjoyed kind of partnering with that company to give them feedback on how to improve. The other thing you can do, which I'm sure most of you know, is that you can command a much more affordable price for newer programs. These new ed tech companies, they're smart, young, either students out of college or educators straight out of the education system that are hungry to bring their passion about their learning solution um, to students and teachers. They wished that they had had this type of opportunity to learn uh, when they were growing up or when they were in the classroom. And so they're anxious to get in uh, to find school partners. You can negotiate good pricing. You can negotiate multi-year pricing, or you can negotiate if you don't want to commit to multi-years to, to, for them to honor the current year's pricing over the next, say, three to five years. Uh, so it's much more affordable to get in on, on the ground level. Uh, and you get to inf influence the product and really make it better. So we are big advocates for doing your proper due diligence and, and starting with a pilot with a small group of students uh, with some newer solutions. And if you're satisfied with the company's mission, their evidence base, then we just really want to encourage you to, to conduct a, a really thoughtful pilot. Don't settle just for their free trial. Talk to their sales reps and talk about doing at least a three-month pilot. And so when you run that pilot, we have um, kind of six domains that we recommend that you use to evaluate that pilot's evidence of effectiveness. So I'm gonna show you what those are very quickly. So if you're an individual teacher, you can pilot a program in your classroom and use these domains to, 
to evaluate its effectiveness. And if you're a school and district leader, you can organize a pilot among one or more teachers in your supervision and coach them through using these domains to evaluate the effectiveness of the pilot so that you can be really objective about determining if it's worth buying. Because by the time the pilot's over, you're gonna be best friends with the sales rep and you want to make sure that you're, you're keeping proper distance and really being objective when you're making that decision. So our six domains for evaluating a pilot objectively. Again, what's the congruence between the product and your specific environment where you lead? Um, is there alignment, of course, in the mission, in the objectives, the teaching philosophy? Um, what Ash Gelb from DSST had to say about pockets change, she, she sent me an email and she said, I am freaking pumped for a social justice focused financial literacy curriculum. We launched a Finland pilot this year and they didn't have any curriculum that wasn't white middle class centered. The team has been questioning how to scale the program as we would like to make Finlit a graduation requirement. And so um, she did a good job of looking for alignment between that company and her own setting. Next is guidance. As you're, the reason why you need to do this three month pilot is because you wanna make sure that it is, it's providing enough guidance for the teachers to use it effectively. Um, what professional learning is the company providing? They should be providing the same professional learning for the pilot as they, they do for a full adoption. Uh, and is, are they working with the, the piloting teachers directly or do they train the trainers and then do they support the professional developers to work with the teachers? Do they provide free webinars or video guides? Do they have on-demand help as needed? Um, so really objectively evaluate that guidance. Of course, how culturally responsive are the materials? It's a bit easier to look for cultural responsiveness in humanities course materials sometimes than maybe in STEM course materials. Dr. Dominique Jones, the director of curriculum instruction from the Cherry Creek School District in Colorado says that when she evaluates math materials for cultural responsiveness, she looks for the amount of choice and collaboration that the instruction provides to students, as well as the examples provided in the learning materials, or are they representative of diverse populations? So look and see. When I think about the, the resource we were thinking of, Membean, I think of another vocabulary study that might be more culturally responsive called Rhymes with Reason. Rhymes with Reason, like Membean, tries to uh, works with students to help them learn kind of SAT and ACT vocabulary, but it does it through the use of the vocabulary's terms in hip hop music. So when a student's studying a word, they're, they're listening to it being used in songs that they love, they're um, watching you know, the artist perform it when possible on the screen. They're analyzing the way it's used in the lyrics. And so it's just kind of has that extra bit of culturally responsiveness of using the student's own um, music that they love in the examples of the vocabulary study. So culture, that's, that's why we think cultural responsiveness is so important. And then not only is guidance important, but also teacher lift. So, how easy is it um, to, to get this solution and start using it? What does onboarding look like? How much handholding does the company do? How clear are the instructions? Um, you know, is, is it really grab and go or does it take a lot of lift? And if it does take a lot of lift because some of the best, say project-based learning materials do require a lot of teacher learning to be able to be successful with, then is it improving their instructional practice? Is it worth the teacher lift because the teachers are becoming better teachers by using this type of pedagogy? Uh, and finally, of course, and this is what you have to be really objective about um, is, oh, this isn't finally, the second to last, engagement. Are the students enjoying it? Um, is, is the learning active? Are they, um, are they sitting passively and learning or are they really interactive and interacting with each other? Is there a lot of opportunity for choice? Uh, I mentioned earlier a program called Story World. Uh, Story World is an online library of books 
that's an amazing reading platform for students learning another language. So it's great for students that um, are English language learners and they come with their native language and they want to read books in the target language of English or in world language classes when we have native English speakers and they want to read books in a tar another target language. What the way it works is that um, it's digital and there's some 60 or more picture books, but not picture books like little kid picture books, like sophisticated, maybe about photosynthesis, beautiful artwork that's been created. And the student selects their, their target language, their study and their native language. And they can, they'll read the book on the screen in their target language. They can wear headphones and listen to the book in their target language, but they can click on any word or phrase that they don't understand and have it translated in writing into their native language and also spoken in their native language. And so it's a super bilingual immersive reading experience followed up by all sorts of uh, activities and, um, you know, learning games about the content that they just learned. And it's aligned to other content area standards, not just reading. So like I mentioned photosynthesis um, and different history standards that students can read. So it is, it is one where the students are working more independently, but they are highly engaged. Uh, and so that all, it always wins over adoptions for them because of how much the students love it. Finally, this is the most important piece. Is it efficacious? You have to determine what learning objectives you expect to be learned through the course of the pilot on the on the outset, and then figure out a way to track, like East Windsor did with with Written Out Loud. They figured out that that they thought students should improve in their annual writing assessments, and they intentionally tracked that data from beginning to end, and so they are able to know that the um, student that they met the learning objectives, that they exceeded it, and that it is an efficacious um, program worth investing in. So that is our kind of pilot evaluation tool. We actually developed a whole online course for this at Ed Curation. Um, it's called Piloting Instructional Resource, and I'll show you how to get there really quick if this is helpful for you. So here at the Ed Curation website, I showed you how to search for different resources, but we also have a bunch of programs here that Christy was talking to you a little bit about, Ed Trustees. Um, the course that can help you with piloting instructional materials is located under Explorations. Explorations are micro-professional learning for educators. I, these are all free. I'd encourage you to check these out as well as you're developing professional development for your teams, you know, identifying academic gaps to reclaim learning loss, dyslexia, dyscalculia, and digital learning, decodable books, so on and so forth. Um, the one that will help you with adoption is right here, piloting instructional resource. It's to support you in conducting and sharing the results of your pilot um, to make sure that, that it met your needs. Great. And finally, if everything checks out for you for the resource you're considering and the pilot produces the results that you were hoping for, then negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Don't be afraid. Um, I love the book. You've probably, if you haven't read it already called Never Split the Difference uh, by Chris Voss. Chris is a hostage negotiator that has taken the lessons he learned from hostage negotiations to business negotiations. And even, you know, in your personal life, he gives examples of how he can use these hostage negotiating skills to, for example, get the best price when he's buying a new car. Um, and so we at Ed Curation have all read this book and we love it. I think he even has an online course and you can even use the tactics that you learn with your partner and they won't even know that you're doing it. So uh, it's, a, it's a great book to help you with those negotiations and fun to listen to too, because he tells you all the stories about hostage negotiations. And so let's see what we learned today. Who needs to be proficient in evaluating instructional resources? Let's write it in the chat, shall we? What do you think? In your system, who needs to be proficient in evaluating instructional resources? Garrett says he does. We all do, right? 
everyone up and down the system um, because sometimes teachers are coming to us and asking for us to make purchases. And so we want to make sure that we're training them up um, on what, you know, they're going to conferences, they're going to online conferences, they're being exposed to things. I mentioned something called Unruly Splats, which is another just amazing tool. Um, but, you know, they're there. And uh, a, a lot of these programs are really looking for teacher adoption first, um, and then kind of working up the system. So we want to make sure teachers are are being good evaluators as well. And what are the five recommended methods for evaluating instructional resources? Do you remember them? First, we want you to look for mission, standards, evidence, run a pilot and negotiate the pricing. And so where can you turn for free help for quick resource evaluation? Shameless plug. We're here to help you at Ed Curation. Um, we're totally free for educators always. We do, obviously we've built a self-serve tool where you can come and kind of look for what you need yourself, but we also do a lot of handholding and help educators uh, look for new resources. It's how we end up, it's how we curate resources on our marketplace. In fact, if there's something that you're looking for and it's not on the marketplace, there's a little place that you can recommend at the top of the screen. Um, for us to, to find it for you and help you. So that is what I have prepared today. What questions are there? Feel free to enter your questions in the chat. A couple of you have indicated in the chat specific resources that you'll be searching for. And I reached out to you directly to say, email me, I'd love to help. Um, just to reiterate what Tim Marie said, it, we're, um, this is a service that there is no cost to. We, we love to help curate and connect you with resources for free. So when I reached out to you, it was not a sales pitch. I really do want to help and, um, and would love to do that. If you have any other questions, feel free to enter those in the chat right now. Um, we only have a few minutes left. So um, we'd be happy to follow up with you after the webinar as well. Um, I will put my email in the chat. I'm the, probably the best one to reach out to the front line of um, if you're searching for something or have questions about the webinar. Let's see here. Okay, so Garrett, if I'm understanding your question right, you're asking about resources that you're seeing on Ed Curation, but they haven't provided their Ed reports or their What Works Clearinghouse data. So should we, are you asking, should we assume that they don't have that data? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll chat with you, Garrett, you've already emailed me, so we'll chat directly. Um, Timory, they're asking in the chat if you would talk about Ed Trustees. Actually, Renee, why don't you come on and talk about Ed Trustees? Hi, my name is Renee Uslas. I'm the Chief Learning Officer for Ed Curation, and I would like to invite you or any other member of your team who's interested in learning a little bit more about how to become uh, a, the most effective instructional leader that is leading these purchasing decisions. So one thing that you can do is to go on the Ed Curation website jump up to the program section and you'll see an Ed Trustee drop down box where people can apply to be part of this unique program that will is both a leadership development program, but also a program where people can get access to these free resources and pilot them uh, to test them out, to see if they are effective in their own setting and to give feedback, not only to their colleagues who might be using them, but also to the developers. So we really see this as a great way for educators to lead uh, and be have an impact beyond their own classroom, beyond their own school, out into the country. And so I invite you to nominate or to apply to participate yourself. And those educators also receive a certification. So it's um, a way for them to continue to build their own skills and um, receive additional you know, accolades. So um, we have one minute left and I know that Rosie had a few parting words. 
Great. So thank you so much, um, Christy and Timory and Renee for coming on today and talking about ed curation. Um, this has been so impressive, um, the, just the amount of information and um, resources that you have on the ed curation uh, website for everyone. I was really excited to see the explorations um, part that's free PD for people to use because there's so much there as well as um, the free pilot evaluation tool, which I would think you could use even just for curriculum development as a great tool to help you when you're developing curriculum. So kudos for all of that. I'd also like to encourage everyone who is thinking about becoming an ed trustee to apply for that because it sounds like a really exciting opportunity for leadership and to be able to just explore some of these wonderful products that you have listed on your website. So again, I can't thank you enough for coming on and for anyone that's listening, the best part of all of this is it's free for educators. So please share this uh, resource with your colleagues, with your friends, with your teachers, because it is a great way to get your hands on some of the best materials that are evidence-based out there for educators to use with students. So thank you so much again. Christy, Timory, and Renee for sharing this with us today. Just a quick reminder that we have a couple of excellent webinars happening during February. First off, we have the monthly early childhood responsive support roundtable session again on this Thursday, February 3rd at 9 a.m. We do them once a month, but this time we are actually having the topic is implementing rigorous high quality play-based learning experiences in the early grades grades and it features Oswagachi Elementary School Principal Joe Macrino. So I know that you're not going to want to miss listening to what he and his school are doing as far as play-based learning experiences in early grades. So please join us on Thursday morning at nine o'clock. Also on February 15th, Dr. William Summers will be back with us talking about emotional anorexia. So we hope you'll join us to learn how you can build and improve the resilience, stamina, hope, and endurance for yourself as a leader and for your faculty and staff. Once again, I wanna thank our corporate partners, First Man, College Funding Coach, MCM Fundraising, Justins and Pullman and Comley for their continuing support of CAS professional development for principals and all educators in Connecticut. I'd also like to thank all of you for joining us today. This webinar has been recorded and will be posted for future viewing on the CAS website. Please share the link with your colleagues once it's posted. Again, thank you, Christy, to Marie and Renee, and to everyone at Ed Curation. The website, once again, is edcuration.com. And thank you all for joining us today. Take care, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.